Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So I believe that we've clearly established that, um, that Jerusalem is still trodden down of the other nations. Therefore, the times of the Gentiles um, has not been fulfilled yet, as Jesus called it. And uh, they will be fulfilled at his return when the Mystery Babylon image of Daniel chapter 2 and uh, Mystery Babylon of Revelation is destroyed. Then uh, we'll see that event uh, hopefully in my lifetime. I, I've calculated that by the Word of God to be about 35 years from this year. And you can check out my What Year Is It? Um, video and study on my website crosstheborder.org just look for what year is it or go to my YouTube page and you can find a you can find a presentation there okay what are we looking at next ah that's uh, what I wanted to do next it's called the rapture has been cancelled and I have this article on my website also but I uh, just uh, thought I'd do that first segment to build up to it. Well, not really canceled. Perhaps we'll just have to postpone it a couple of times before it is called off altogether. The starting point for our little examination is a present day rebuilding of the Jewish temple. And unless you've been hiding under a rock, you know that millions of dollars worth of preparations have already been made toward the toward this end when it begins you may want to lay down all of your presuppositions because I'm sure of one thing that there will be plenty of surprises for all concerned however this starting point will need something bigger than money it will be it will need a treaty of some sort because Jerusalem and the old city has been dis declared an international city and that means it belongs to the nations. Jesus said, and Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And that word Gentiles is the same word that may be translated nations from the original Greek. So he could have said until the times of the nations be fulfilled. I believe this is a reference to the same event described at the end of Daniel chapter 2 where mystery, the mystery Babylon image is obliterated at his appearing. The rebuilding of the Jewish temple and reinstitution of the priest's temple sacrifice system have been foretold numerous times throughout the Old Testament. But every instance of this prophecy has been followed by its fulfillment with the second temple after the Babylonian captivity and the 70 years desolation period that began when Nebuchadnezzar came in and conquered Judah and Jerusalem and destroyed the city and the temple. Does this mean that there will not be a third attempt to build the Jewish temple and restore the priest temple sacrifice system before Jesus returns? That's the question. You know, I don't question whether there will be a third temple because I believe there will be, but I believe that will be built and completed and, uh, and everything fulfilled to the letter of God's word when he returns. Okay? The temple in all its glory like it never appeared before with the, under the hands of fallible man will be perfected when the Messiah returns. But not until then. Like I said, there may be an attempt to build a third temple. I believe that there will at least be an attempt. I'm not sure whether it will be completed or not. I don't know. Because the scripture doesn't tell me. And all I know is what the scripture tells me and what I see on the ground. And I see that there are, there's a lot of money and a lot of effort going into the building of the temple a third time. So will there be a third attempt to build the Jewish temple and restore the priest temple sacrifice system before the Messiah comes? It is very likely that there will be an attempt 
to build a third Jewish temple, but it may or may not be completed because the Bible does not have one prophecy of the rebuilding of this temple that was given after the second temple was completed. And specifically speaking about its rebuilding before the Messiah returns. This fact and the omission of specific language detailing a third temple may lead us to safely conclude that such prophecies have been completely fulfilled in the second temple and any attempt to build another temple may or may not reach fruition. When an agreement or treaty does arise which includes the building of the temple, for many in the Christian and evangelical world this will be the starting shot for what they believe to be a seven year tribulation period which is based upon a non-literal interpretation of Daniel's 70th week. The text simply does not support this supposition. Therefore it is based solely upon conjecture because taken literally the events of Daniel's 70 weeks were allotted a 490 year time period within which to be fulfilled and history shows that it has been completely fulfilled. And if you go to my uh, my website you'll find several articles there that uh, that bear this out. Um, one is uh, Show Me the Gap and the other is um, the Seven Year Tribulation Deception. So go to my website crosstheborder.org and look for those articles and, and supporting videos there. Continuing, nevertheless it is more than likely that a third temple will commence to be built to the end of restoring the priest temple sacrifice system before the Messiah returns. And when this happens all of the rapture enthusiasts will become very excited but their enthusiasm will be quickly tempered when they do not begin to fly away. All of the pre-tribulation rapturists will suddenly join the mid-tribulation rapture camp and hunker down for another three and a half years. And I had some uh, illustrations here. Let me see if I can find those. Here it is. Right here we go. And we'll take a look at those. I get this thing to switch over. There we go. And uh, this, these are the rapture positions. And so when they start to build the temple, that will be here. Okay. Pre-trib rapture. This is, uh, yeah, this, this is the supposedly Daniel's 70th week but it's not. This is no, you can't find anything in the Bible about uh, the Daniel's 70th week uh, preceding the return of the Messiah or a seven year tribulation period preceding the return of the Messiah. Uh, these things are, this is kind of made up out of conjecture with the scripture but this is what they believe. Okay? That uh, the pre-trib rapture happens at the beginning when they get a treaty to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And uh, I'm not denying that, that that may or may not happen and it is more likely that it will happen. So when it does happen and nobody's raptured out, what are they going to think? All of the rapture adherents. Well, they're going to say, well, you know, they're going to they're wait a few days or maybe even a few months before they give up and go, well, it must be mid-tribulation so they'll jump to the mid-tribulation rapture position here okay and uh, so let's uh, let's continue our article here all the pre-tribulation raptures will s rapturist will suddenly join the mid-tribulation rapture camp and hunker down for another three and a half years the politician who is assigned to bring this treaty or agreement will be identified by the adherents of the left behind seven year tribulation scheme of eschatology as the antichrist character of those fictional books. They will not be disappointed in the fact that the treaty will be broken and it is unlikely that the temple sacrifice system will even be instituted. Whether the sacrifice actually begins or not just the end of the agreement will be enough to qualify as putting an end to the sacrifice 
for the left behind version. The script calls for this to happen in the middle of the counterfeit 70th week and will be followed as close as possible so that when the first three and a half years pass, the rapture adherents will once again be ready to float into the air to meet Jesus and the dead in Christ, but they will be disappointed once again, requiring a last grasp to the post-tribulation rapture position. And uh, there it is there. This is the, the pre-trip, mid-trip doesn't happen. So, so they're going to miss one rapture. It's going to pass by. The second rapture will pass by. And they're going to go, certainly, it's going to be the last one. Because we've already been disappointed twice. And I'm telling you, this disappointment building up is part of a great delusion. It's part of a deception. And I hope you'll see it by the end of this uh, segment. Okay, continue an article. This article can be found on my website, crossborder.org, and it's called The Rapture Has Been Canceled. So if you want to read it and uh, check it out for yourself, it's all there for you. Of course, this last three and a half years will pass in desperate anticipation by those who have now been disappointed twice. Surely this final wait will be absolutely secure in its expectation because in the minds of those indoctrinated in the left behind seven year tribulation deception, there is no other position to move to. By the end of this counterfeit 70th week, enough of the attributes of the fictional series will be accomplished to satisfy its true believers. The puppet false antichrist who makes and or breaks the treaty will be deposed or worse. We'll have to wait and see on that. This will also be the final blow to the rapture and the death of hope for a resurrection event that precedes the grave. A new social order with its main features, social justice, charity and truth, and financial equality will be introduced to the world by a new world leader. This leader will be the true Antichrist. He will assuage their disappointment by proclaiming, I am the Vicar of Christ, the true fulfillment of prophecy, and now begins the millennial reign and a new world social order of peace. National debts will be forgiven to kick off the new fair and equal monetary system. Read Mark of the Beast. The three great monotheistic religions will be united in peace. It will be like heaven on earth. The requirement of forced peace, like Pax Romana, will tell the tale as the Messiah warned. As the Messiah warned, the violent take it by force. No one will ever be forced into the true kingdom of God. This would violate the very principle of the gospel of the kingdom which requires voluntary repentance. And of course the scripture reveals to us what will happen to those who don't volunteer in the new world social order that will be introduced at this time. Now the ecumenical religious leaders who join with the beast and its image and their one world religion that follow the Antichrist, they will affirm to their congregations that there has always been a debate about the rapture. You see how this, you see how this deception, the rapture deception is going to play out? You need to understand this ecclesia, all of you remnant followers of the Messiah, you need to understand this. All of the elect, the sooner the scales fall off your eyes, the better for you. Okay? They will say, oh, there's always been a debate about the rapture, pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, so that we should not be disappointed. I mean, after all, two raptures went by, so your disappointment You've learned to live with the disappointment gradually. See how that works? Because what they're trying to do is get you not to, to not believe in a resurrection before the grave. That's the whole thing. Because there will be a resurrection before the grave and it will only happen once. 
as the scripture foretolds when the last trump sounds, not at the end of the seven year tribula tribulation period that is made up out of whole cloth. Continuing here, they will say, there's always been a debate about the rapture, pre tribulation, mid tribulation, post tribulation, so that we should not be disappointed because what is sure is the gospel that we have learned for the last hundred years. Don't you know we get to go to heaven when we die? And all the people will exclaim, oh yeah, we get to go to heaven when we die. Don't you remember? Isn't that what they've told us for the last hundred years? Repeat after me the magic words and you get to go to heaven when you die. However, this too is a subtle deception because Jesus never said, repent for you get to go to heaven when you die. Rather, he did warn of bad preachers who would shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, he said, neither suffer ye them that are going them that are entering to go in. What did he mean? He, ta he talked about entering the kingdom now. His gospel was different. He said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. And the Bible clearly teaches that we go to the resurrection when we die only if we are already in his kingdom. For he also proclaimed, he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Nowhere does the Bible teach that the resurrection is preceded by a seven-year tribulation period or that it follows Daniel's 70th week. When you see the temple begin to be rebuilt, it will actually initiate a seven-year countdown to the reign of the true Antichrist and the beginning of of the new world social order with its companion mark of the beast monetary system. Now I ask you, church, elect of God, don't be so quick to dismiss the almost unbelievable but carefully crafted great delusion that I have exposed here. How are we supposed to respond to these things? We should continue to walk in the Spirit and be led by the Spirit. Our Creator calls His elect to obey His commandments, allow His Holy Spirit to bring forth the fruit of repentance in your life. the good works which God has before ordained that we might walk in them. If you cannot obey him now, how do you th think, how do you believe that he will lead you when the time is critical? And we have some critical times coming up. We need to learn and trust, to trust and obey him now. And then we will be able to hear and obey him through the global Great Depression that we are in, which will keep continue to deepen because it's been introduced uh, well by the monetary rulers of this world for the purpose of introducing their one world mark monetary system okay so uh, the the coming world wars the, the the wars and rumors of wars and whatever turmoil I, I don't know if there's going to be an all-out third world war or if it's going to be limited, I don't know. I don't have all those details. But I know there's going to be trouble everywhere. And there's going to be trouble even in the land of America. Uh, the Holy Spirit, God did give me a dream about America's future. And I've talked about that in the past. And, uh, of course, uh, absolutely, we have to deal with the Mark of the Beast Inquisition that will be coming once they institute their worldwide Mark monetary system there will be an inquisition to inquire about those who refuse, who recant, or refuse to participate in it. And death will pre is prescribed by the scripture itself for those who refuse, that they will be persecuted and killed for not receiving the mark 
or repenting of it. Yes, I believe that you can repent of it. Cross the border into his kingdom. Obey the king and live forever. Nothing is more important. And obedience starts to the king of the kingdom of heaven, which we are to enter now. We don't go to heaven when we die. That's, that's not why we're saved. We're saved to enter into his kingdom now. And it's only if you're in his kingdom when your mortality ends by whatever means it ends. It's only if you are in his kingdom, walking in his kingdom, being led by his spirit when your mortality ends that you will be in his kingdom forever. And that includes heaven and the resurrection of the dead and whatever uh, that, that you might want to put in to that concept. But I believe the scripture gives us plenty to hope for. All of the promises are ours. The second that we repent and enter into his kingdom. He said, repent for the kingdom is at hand. Repentance is the key to the kingdom of God. It is where you cross the border. That's why I've named my broadcast, Cross the Border, because I'm calling everyone everywhere by the gospel of the kingdom and across the border into the kingdom of God. There's nothing more important. The, the gospel that Jesus preached is the gospel of the kingdom. There is no other gospel. There, there, there are a lot of other gospels out there being preached, but there's only one that Jesus preached. And he said, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached in the whole earth. Then the end comes. Then will the end come. So I preach and I bid all to cross the border into his kingdom and obtain eternal life. There is absolutely nothing more important. Okay, well, <laughs> that about wraps up my presentation on the rapture has been canceled. And I believe these things that uh, we've covered in this hour are very important for the elect of God and very important for those people that have heard a lot of prophecy They've watched the Left Behind movies, and those things don't pan out because they cause they cause disbelief. A lot of people go, "Well, I didn't get raptured." They're going to walk away. The Bible must not be true. But the elect, you know who you are. God knows who you are. The scales will fall off your eyes if they're falling off now. That's great. If you watch this presentation and you're going, "Yeah," and you're research researching the Word of God and you're going, "Wow, yeah, that I can't find that either." Then there, the I can't find the gap. I can't uh, find a seven-year tribulation that precedes the rapture. I can find nothing explicit in the Word that says the resurrection follows Daniel's 70th week. Can't find any of that. So, my website, crosstheborder.org, I've got a lot of articles there for you. And I'm going to put some of them up on the screen here and show you how to get there. Let's see. Mm -hmm. There we go. This is my website, and of course, this article is there. The rapture has been canceled, and if you uh, go over to the right-hand column here, you'll see a whole listing of my posts. America in the Last Days. Uh, you should watch all of these, actually, uh, if you're really interested in prophecy. Uh, you, what year is it? Very important. It, you can you can uh, gives you a, a time map through the Bible of. Uh, what year is it and where a lot of these things fit. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, Matthew chapter 24, I explain it in detail. Um, illustrations and everything so that you can see it. The abomination of desolation, that fits in with Daniel chapter 24. It's what I don't cover in that presentation in depth, but I get into it in depth in this presentation here. Uh, rapture, resurrection. Okay, well, that's about all I have time 